Busy with some webinar, that's why I missed it. Yeah, anyway, the courts were on full. Oh, that's nice. By the way, I'm sorry I couldn't attend your free synopsis. I heard it went really well. Thank you. Uh, so I'm just curious, uh, if I were to ask you about your PhD work, uh, could you please explain to me in a brief and simple yeah, way? Yeah, sure, sure. So basically, uh, before going to my work, so our lab basically focuses on uh, emerging viral diseases. Mm -hmm. We're focusing on diverse aspects, mm -hmm. ranging from vaccine development, mm -hmm. viral entry, and so on. So before explaining what I does, so I'll just ask you a brief question. Like when you think about emerging viral diseases, what comes to your mind? Immediately what pops to your mind? COVID-19. Yeah, because that's now irrespective of age group now, everybody is well aware of the term COVID-19. So this was not the condition few years back. So starting from 2019 due to the pandemic, so now everybody is aware of the term virology or viruses or coronavirus. So my work also is basically related to coronavirus biology. And if I ask you like, what might be one of the limitations in working on this highly emerging pathogens? Or are there any limitations to work on these pathogens? It's highly like, pathogenic. Yeah, that's true. If um, it's highly pathogenic, what do you require for that? It needs facilities. Yeah, that's one of the basic limitations uh, which limits the research on emerging viruses such as COVID, coronavirus. So you need highly sophisticated research laboratories. So those laboratories are typically known as biosafety levels. So you have from biosafety level 1 to biosafety level 4, mm -hmm. and 4 being the highest rank. So if you think about viruses, you might have heard about Ebola, yes. kind of those disease outbreaks. So they require a very high facility like biosafety level 4. And coronaviruses, that is, uh, they require actually biosafety level 3. So, but in developing countries, actually, we have very limited facilities. So we have to adapt to new techniques which can be used to work on these viruses, such that they can be brought down to a lower facility, such as BSL-2 or so. So my research was basically to uh, generate or to develop such kind of tools. So and one kind of approach is known as pseudotyping. So in this approach, what we generally do is like, we take a replication uh, computer virus that is known as VSV, it's known as vesicular stomatitis virus. This can be handled by anybody in a protein BSL-2 laboratory. It doesn't require a BSL-3 facility. So what we generally do is we do some genome modification to VSV, such that it becomes replication incompetent. Incompetent in the sense, once it goes into a cell, it will not come out as a new infectious particle. That's why we are reducing the infectivity of the virus. So it, what we generally did to make it replication incompetent is that we removed the envelope protein of the virus. So if you think about any virus particle, it's just like a spherical kind of surface and you have some proteins on the surface. In the case of corona, you might know it's on a spike protein. So each virus has its own characteristic protein on the surface. In the case of our BSL-2 virus, there is also a glycoprotein on the surface. So we removed that glycoprotein and instead of that what we did is we added the spike protein of coronavirus. So ultimately you are getting a chimeric virus which has the genome of a BSL-2 virus but it will be representing the surface of emerging coronavirus. Mm -hmm. So the spike protein will be decorated on the surface of the particle. So the applications what you think about of this technology is that as it has only the spike of coronavirus we can use it for studies related to viral entry because spike protein is the key factor which determines the entry of a virus to cell particularly coronavirus to the cell. So what generally happens in an infection scenario is like the virus comes and binds to its receptor. Receptors are proteins on the cell surface. So once it binds to the proper receptor, it gets the signal to go into the cell. So that is a critical factor which initiates an infection cycle. So if you could mimic that kind of a spike decoration, we could actually mimic a coronavirus infection. So that's what we generally do. We make pseudotyped viruses for emerging coronaviruses. And emerging coronaviruses doesn't mean that it's only SARS-CoV-2 or the COVID-19. We have done it for the initial ancestral strain that is SARS-CoV-1, which occurred in 2002. And the mers cov which happened in 22. But all these diseases, the SARS-1 and the MERS, we are actually able to control immediately. But the SARS-CoV-2 one, that became a really highly transmissible strain. And it spread across worldwide. More than, I think, 230 countries, 220 countries are getting affected by this. What are its applications? Yeah, so as I was explaining to you some time back, right, uh, basically the spike protein is decorated on the surface. So we can do all kinds of viral entry studies. So we have already proved in our lab, like pseudotyped viruses can be used for understanding the entry of these viruses, SARS, MERS, or SARS cov 2. And one point I missed in the previous section was like uh, this genome of the VSV is actually modified, which is that this glycoprotein is deleted from the genome. 
that is what actually makes it replication incomplete so instead of the glycoprotein gene in the genome what we have added is a GFP reporter so why we did so is like when the VSV pseudoviruses goes and infects a cell or goes and enters into a cell immediately within 10 to 12 hours the GFP starts to express so that is one of the way to real-time monitor where the infection has happened or not so this is one of the advantage of using this system because if you use a live virus system it takes more than 24 hours to get the readout but if if you have a GFP tag to your system in 10 to 12 hours the GFP starts to express and you can immediately read out is it working or not so one application as I mentioned is wire lending another one is like using or understanding the neutralization response of vaccine candidates or serum samples so all of us are vaccinated against COVID-19 so when and yeah you might be aware that this is what we have been vaccinated is with the spike protein itself so once the spike protein goes into your body there should be an immune response and people generally check it by checking the blood sample or the sera sample so antibody production will start to occur against the antigen and ultimately you should get a protective efficacy so for checking these kind of efficacy uh, studies what we can do is you can use a pseudotyped virus that means if you have a sera sample from a mice or from a human you can directly take the sera do a neutralization assay so if your sera is able to bind to the virus it will not allow it to enter into the cells so the advantage of using pseudotype is like it can be read out in just 12 hours if your sera is working or if your vaccine vaccine candidate is working in less than 12 hours you will know whether it is protecting you so one of the another advantage uh, is like screening of entry inhibitors so entry means viral entry so many people during the covid pandemic have started uh, synthesizing a lot of drug molecules and small peptides to block the viral infection so but it will not be easy for them to test all these compounds in a vsl3 facility because it's very highly expensive to use a vsl3 once so suppose if you have a library of say a thousand compounds and if you want to test which one among these works better for COVID-19 or any, any coronavirus what we can generally do is like we can take all these compounds maybe thousand, two thousand or ten thousand try it on a pseudotype device so from the ten thousand you can narrow it down and bring to ten or fifteen which are exactly working fine for the system then do a live virus study in a sophisticated facility so at the end you are minimizing your expenditure in the facility you can use this kind of pseudotype devices for testing all of this. Yeah, so our lab also has recently discovered some compounds. So we have identified from green tea, so which are actually working against coronaviruses, all the coronaviruses. So the drug is actually known as EGCG, epicalocatechin A. So that also we identified using pseudotype devices. So we could able to prove that it blocks the viral entry by binding to the spike protein. So is this approach only restricted to COVID-19 or can it be used for other viruses as well? Yeah, that's a good question actually. So actually the advantage of the system is like it can be adapted to any viruses. So actually in our lab itself, we have uh, done pseudotyping for viruses belonging to the family Flaviviridae. So Flaviviridae, if you I say like members like Dengue virus, Japanese encephalitis virus and similar kind of viruses. So we have already uh, developed pseudotyped virus for Flaviviruses as well. And right now our research focus is on developing novel approaches for uh, as developing vaccine candidates against COVID-19 or emerging coronaviruses. So we have done some preliminary analysis or work on that. Hopefully the results will be out soon. That's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, so it was a good chat. So. Yeah, nice talking to you. Yeah, yeah, have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.